Hey, what's going on, people? Hope you guys are doing good. Today, we're talking all things Galaxy S24 Ultra, and we're gonna be going over several AI-based camera tips and tricks to help you get the most out of this great camera. Even though it does need a few updates, it's still a fantastic phone, and I can't wait to see the camera improvements Samsung is going to do to the S24 Ultra. With that being said, let's go ahead and dive into the video with number one, which is how to turn any clip into a slow motion clip. Okay, so I'm inside my gallery. If I pull up this portrait mode video shot right here and then go under the information, you can see it is not a slow motion clip. It's shot in 30 frames per second in 4K. So let's go ahead and turn this clip into slow motion. We can do this a couple different ways. So if you wanna preview what it's going to look like in slow motion, all you have to do is play the clip and then touch and hold on the video. Give it a few seconds and then you'll see it start to move really slowly. It's gonna give you a playback in a very slow motion setting, actually the slowest setting possible. So now if I release my finger, you can see it starts to play back normal. If I want the exact same slow motion that I just previewed, I'm going to go in and tap quarter. If I want something that's not so slow, I can tap half. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and tap quarter. I'm going to drag out the space that's going to be slow motion to the entire clip. I'm gonna tap save, save as copy, and this is what that slow motion video now looks like compared to the original. Now, isn't that pretty cool? You can apply slow motion to any clip outside of 8K, but you can downscale that 8K to 4K and then apply to slow motion that way. Speaking of slow motion, did you know that the Galaxy S24 Ultra can record 4K video up to 120 frames per second, but you can only do it in two modes. Let me show you. So if I go into the camera app and then go under video and then tap on the resolution and frame rate at the top, you can see I'm limited to 60 frames per second under UHD. But if I go under more, then go under pro video, tap on the resolution and frame rate, you can see now I can go all the way up to 120. So that's one way of doing 120 frames per second 4K video. Here's the other way. So if I go back and then go under more, then tap on slow motion, tap on the frame rate up at the top right, go under UHD, you can see now I have 120. So those are the two ways to access 4K 120 frames per second. And I gotta say, the video looks really, really good. I prefer using pro mode because I wanna slow it down in post, but if you just want something great straight out of the camera, the slow motion mode is pretty legit. I almost forgot, I have one more tip for you when it comes to 4K 120. So if you go into the camera app and then go under pro video and then select 4K 120 at the top, you can see you can now record 4K 120 frames per second, not just with the regular camera, Camera, but also the ultra wide. Now I know I said this is an AI camera tips and tricks video, but I also wanna talk about some of the new features in the Galaxy S24 Ultra, including the brand new five times 50 megapixel telephoto camera that actually looks pretty good. It does need some optimization, but so far I'm pretty impressed with the stills coming off of it. Now, if you don't know how to access the 50 megapixel telephoto mode, what you're gonna do is go into the camera app, then switch to the five times zoom, Tap up top where it says 12 megapixel, and from here, select 50, and now you're in the 50 megapixel telephoto mode, and like I said, it looks pretty good. Now staying on that same topic, did you know that you can now record 8K video using that five times telephoto camera? Let me show you. So if you go under video mode, and then select the five times telephoto, tap the resolution and frame rate at the top, go under 8K, there you go. If you go under more, then go under pro video, then go under the resolution and frame rate, tap 8K. Now you can switch to the telephoto and you can also adjust it from 8K 30 to 8K 24. Now in my previous video, I did have some issues with the 8K video coming off of the telephoto, which again, it just needs to be optimized. But I went out to Disney Springs and I captured a few more clips and I gotta say they do look pretty good. So lighting is definitely key if you're planning on using that five times telephoto with 8K video. So unfortunately, Samsung decided to get rid of director's view, but they just replaced it with a new mode called dual record. So look at dual record mode as the same thing as director's view, except we have an upgrade. So if I go under more in the camera app and then go under dual record, and then I tap on the resolution up at the top, you can see I can now dual record in 4K 30 frames per second. And if I tap on the cameras here, I can select everything from the front to the ultra wide, to the wide and the telephoto, all again in 4K 30 frames per second. And it looks really, really good. So look at all of this food, look at this. Light pig at Disney Springs. I'm fixing to go in, carnivore style. 
Now, one cool thing that you can do with this mode is you can record in two different field of views using say the ultra wide and the main sensor in 4K and then save those video clips as two separate video files. To do that, you're going to select the arrow up at the top to where it says save videos in separate files. And then from here, you're going to select the cameras that you wanna record from. So instead of front, we'll do wide and then we'll do ultra wide. So now I'm actually recording from the wide and the ultra wide and those video clips will be saved to two separate video files as you see here. This is really cool because I'm able to capture two different perspectives of my son at the same time versus having to stop recording and then switch it up. And it saves me a ton of time. Plus I can see Samsung releasing their own version of spatial video really soon. The next thing I wanna talk about is auto framing. Now I know this isn't new per se, but Samsung has made a significant update to this mode. What you're gonna do is go into the camera app, go under video mode, then tap this little box in the bottom right. Now auto framing is turned on. Now what's changed is now I can go from the ultra wide to the main to the two times digital zoom. Now the main sensor is gonna give you the best quality. And here's what's really cool. So if I tap on the frame rate and resolution, I can change to 4K. So now I'm recording 4K using that auto framing feature and it looks really good, especially if you use that main sensor. Let me just give you an example. So right now I have auto framing turned on and if I move around a little bit, you can see it's tracking me. Apologize for the audio because I am pretty far away from the mic. If I back up, it keeps me in frame the entire time. It works pretty good. And what's great is it doesn't just work with people, you can also track objects. So here's an example of the object tracking. If I move the phone, you can see it's tracking the camera module on the case, and it's doing a really good job at keeping it center frame. I mean, that's, that's pretty awesome. One thing I found on the Galaxy S24 Ultra that no one is talking about is just how good the standard stabilization is. I'm not talking super steady, I'm talking just a regular video stabilization. Take a look at these clips where I'm jogging with the phone. It literally looks like super steady is turned on, but it's not. And this is shot in 4K at 30 frames per second, and even the 8K video is super, super stable. If for some reason the stabilization is giving you a hard time and your footage is coming out a little wonky or you're using lenses on your Galaxy S24 Ultra, you can go into the camera settings and then disable video stabilization right there, which will keep the OIS on the lens on but turn off the software stabilization that as of right now, it might be the best. Like it's, it's right up there with the iPhone and it looks incredible. Next up, let's talk about how you can use the brand new Samsung AI in order to remove anything or any body from a shot and the way that it replaces that subject is insane. So right here, I have a picture of my wife pulled up and you can see there's quite a few people in the background. Let's go ahead and remove those people. We're gonna bring up the editor by tapping on the pencil icon, then tap on this little blue button. Now I'm gonna draw around the first person, which is this person right here. Then I'm going to select this person right here and this person right here. Then I'm going to press and hold and tap the eraser. So it erased them from the photo. Now I'm going to tap generate and it's going to fill in all of those blank spots. So it does take a minute or two to fully process, but as you can see, it did a pretty good job at removing those people. This is before and this is after. Now, even though that is really cool, there's a couple other things that you can use that same process for, including adding objects to an image. So I have a really nice landscape shot right here, but I wanna add a hot air balloon as well as my wife and son to the photo. To do that, I'm gonna go into the editor, then I'm gonna tap on that blue button, tap on the plus symbol in the top, add from gallery. First off, I'll select the photo of the hot air balloon, which is this one right here. We're gonna go ahead and draw around it, just like so and I'm going to remove the center portion. So I'll deselect this area right here. Then I'll tap done. Go ahead and reframe it, make it small because it does have a lot of imperfections and we don't want to see them in the shot. So now we'll go ahead and get out of that. You can see our hot air balloon is now in the photo. Tap the plus symbol, add from gallery. Now we'll add this picture of my wife and son to that photo. Go ahead and draw around them just like this and let it automatically snap. Okay, now we'll tap done and we'll align this up just like so. And there you go. 
Now it's not perfect. My son's ear is obviously cut off but if I took a little bit more time to perfect the image, I think it would look better. It's definitely not Photoshop level by any means, but it is a lot of fun, and the fact that you can do it on your smartphone using Samsung AI is pretty neat. Another thing that you can do using that same process is expand a photo and make it a little bit bigger. Let me show you. So I have a very busy photo right here of a building and lot of greenery, shrubs, and trees. So I'm gonna go into the editor, tap on that blue button, Rotate the image until I get the most of that checkered box in the background to fill the frame. So we'll go ahead and stop about right there. Then I'm gonna tap generate. So go ahead and let it process. It does take a minute or two. So now that it's done processing, I'm going to tap done. Then I'm gonna go back into that same editor by tapping on that blue button. Now I'm gonna rotate it the other way. And again, until I get a lot of that checkered box in the background to fill the frame. So we'll say about right there, tap generate. And again, let it fill in that blank space. And now we have that finished photo and you can see it added a ton to that shot. Now, once you have an AI generated photo or you used AI to fill in some spaces, you can use the remaster feature to blend everything together. So here we go. This is the photo that we just used Samsung AI to expand and add a bunch of AI generated objects to the photo. Now, just in case, let's say one of these objects looked a little bit different than the overall photo, I can just swipe up You'll see remaster pop up right here. Just tap that. And now it's going to use AI to digitally enhance that photo. So you can see it is done now. This is before and that's after. Very, very slight changes, but the coloring does look better. And overall, the image matches all of the AI objects that were added just a little bit better. So you know how we had to swipe up in order to get to remaster? There's another thing that you can do by swiping up as well, and that's to turn a photo into a 24 hour time lapse. It's a little gimmicky, but you might enjoy it because it is kind of cool. So I have this shot pulled up right here. If I swipe up, you can see I have the remaster option, but also 24 hour time lapse. I'll go ahead and tap that, let it run its thing. Again, it's using AI to generate this. So there we go, it is completely done. And you can see it is adding like a color grade to it to darken the image for nighttime. And then you can see you have sunrise all the way to sunset and it turned that photo into a 12 second time lapse. If you're happy with it, you can go ahead and save it. And that is how you can turn a photo into a time lapse. Now, one important thing to mention is that not every photo can be turned into a time lapse. So if I pull up this photo right here and then swipe up, you can see it's only giving me the remaster option. Did you know that there's a way to check out what Samsung is recommending that you fix? Like it's gonna give you suggestions such as remastering photos or reframing them. Let me show you what I mean. So if you go under albums, then tap on the little lines in the bottom right, and then tap on suggestions. From here, it's going to give you all of Samsung's suggestions based on the photos in your library. So this one right here, it's telling me to remaster. So if I tap on it and then tap on the photo, you can see it's already done it. This is before and this is after. It does look better, so I'm gonna go ahead and save it. And there you go. So here's a quick tip for you. If you're ever going through your gallery and you notice images or videos that look really blown out or overexposed, or maybe they look dull, there's a setting that you can turn on that will change everything. So inside of your gallery, you're gonna tap on the three lines in the bottom right. And I almost forgot, you can get to suggestions without having to go into the albums tab. All you have to do is tap on those three little lines under the main gallery page. But from here, we're gonna go under settings and right here where it says super HDR, you're just gonna turn that on. Now, anything that you have that looked kind of dull or blown out or overexposed should be fixed once that is enabled. If you tend to post a lot of stories, then you're going to love this next one and that's how you can turn a group of photos and videos into a GIF or a collage. So I'm gonna go ahead and select a couple photos and a few video clips here and we're going to tap on create and then tap on collage. You can see it instantly stitched everything together. I can move around those photos to reframe things. I can swap out photos if I want to. I can also adjust the aspect ratio. So right now it's one by one. I can do nine by 16. I can also change the format just by selecting one of these right here. I can adjust the border so I can make it very minimal or I can adjust the color. Now, the other thing that you can do is create a GIF or GIF, depending on how you say it. So if I select a few photos here, so we'll select that photo, that, so we have four different photos selected. I'll tap on create, tap that, and you can see it's going to stitch them together. And it's really slow, so you'll have to adjust the speed. So if I go under speed right here, we'll make it as fast as possible. And then we'll do 
a boomerang so it goes forward and then backwards and we'll play it. You can see that's way too quick, but you know, that's something that you can do. Now, unfortunately, the very last tip or trick that I have for you can't be used just yet because Samsung tablets have not been updated to One UI 6.1, but I'm gonna get you prepared for this feature by enabling the setting inside the Galaxy S24 Ultra. So what you're gonna do is go into your main settings, then you're gonna do a search for camera, and you're gonna see the option for camera sharing right up here. Tap on that, tap on camera sharing, and then make sure that is toggled on. Basically, as long as your other device is updated to One UI 6.1 and you have camera sharing turned on that device, you can use the cameras on your Galaxy S24 as webcams for your tablet. So it's really cool. I've never seen anything like this. I, I know Apple does it with the MacBook and the iPhone, but I haven't seen it done with tablets and I can't wait to try this out. So go ahead and drop a comment and like this video if you want a follow-up once this feature gets released. So there you go. That was several camera tips and tricks for the Galaxy S24 Ultra that utilized the power of Samsung AI, at least most of them. Some of them were just new features that I wanted to talk about, but this phone is shaping up to be a really good phone as long as Samsung puts all of the effort that they put in the S23 Ultra into this phone and it gets all of that update love. I think this is going to be a great, great device. Let me know what you think of all the camera tips and tricks that we went over. Don't worry, I have tons more. Like I have an entire book that I'm gonna go over and uh, we have a lot of tips and tricks to get into. So make sure you subscribe if you don't wanna miss those. And other than that, I'll see you beautiful people in the next one.